one of the most impossible things you can do in data science is say, okay, we've got a residential real estate market. Where will it be in 12 months? It's really hard to extrapolate data in a 12 month period, but 45 days is actually quite possible. And not only is it possible, but it's doable if you have enough data. Welcome to Alphabets, a weekly conversation where we dissect interesting companies and help you understand the investment thesis in about 12 minutes. I'm joined today by Ross Klein, the CIO of ChangeBridge Capital, Pat Connolly, our resident stock detective, and special guest, Tyler Oakland, author of The Operator Newsletter. I'm Nathan Warden, and it's time to talk Open Door. Pat, what does Open Door do? Open Door is a iBuyer. They will approach people who are selling their homes, offer them a cash deal. They accelerate the process, make it quicker and easier for them. And then they want to resell those homes to someone looking for a home. And they can do that basically home flipping. Open Door is often called a home flipper. When you think about a home flipper, home flipping is the process of we buy ugly houses. What you see on your DIY shows, it's a home that needs a lot of renovations. Someone comes in, buys low, makes the re renovations and flips it for a profit. Open Door is a transactions company. It's a payments company. It attempts to do absolutely no specialized labor when it comes to renovations. All it's trying to do is buy a home, make its money in fees, and then add on ancillary services. So it's the opposite of, of a home flipper. It wants really well-maintained homes that it can sell quickly. How long does Open Door hold a house? Open Door on average holds homes for about 88 days, but the homes are under contract for only about 45 of those, which means means risk to its balance sheet and interest fees only accrue during about half that time. Only a year ago, mortgage rates hit an all-time low of 2.65%. But just last week, the 30-year mortgage rate rose to 3.45%, the highest it's been since March 2020. What impact do mortgage rate changes have on Open Door? Presumably higher mortgage rates are a negative for open door. Now the impact is sort of twofold. Higher mortgage rates tend to have somewhat of a negative correlation with home prices. Doesn't necessarily mean that house prices are going to decline, but the rate of acceleration might temper. It also has an impact on their borrowing costs. Although to Tyler's point, the average mortgage is probably a month and a half to two months. The interest rate is not exceedingly high. It might be an impact if rates go up 1% of $25 million a year. It's not going to crush them from a financial perspective. But but I think the impact of tempering home prices and mitigating potential demand for homes has a bigger impact on their business model. What impact do home price valuations and supply for homes have on Open Door? Low inventory might be a little concerning if they have to source inventory by overpaying, but ideally they can somehow make it up on the adjacent services end and keep customers happy and keep the ecosystem growing. Low supply of houses would mean that they really have to overpay to have a substantial inventory. So when consumers look to buy a house, Open Door has houses available. Tyler, why should everyone like and subscribe? It's informed by data. Moving on. U.S. home prices were up 19% year over year. What impact do home price valuations have on Open Door? People make the mistake of saying things like, in the hottest real estate market of all time, Open Door lost money. But at the end of the day, Open Door is a liquidity provider. Its value proposition is even greater in a down market. They're offering speed, certainty, and simplicity. So in a red hot market, a seller's market, their product almost doesn't make sense. Why sell your home immediately if you can just put it on the market and every month it's appreciating in value? But even still, they 12X revenue in four quarters despite that. And I think that we saw some benefit to their gross margins as a result result of the home price appreciation. That's where home price appreciation can be a benefit to open doors margins. But I do think they're going to be market makers in all cycles. Even if home price appreciation were to decelerate and even go in, in the opposite direction, their value proposition becomes even clearer because then you've got homeowners who are saying to themselves, I don't want my home out in the open market for months and months at a time, get no bites. And meanwhile, my home is depreciating. They want to get that liquidity immediately. And that's at the end of the day, what open door offers in the event of home price depreciation appreciation environment, I would expect that Open Door would ratchet up their fees on the order of six to 8%. And people would be willing to pay that premium because it's a greater value. And they'd also decrease their holding time so that it was something like a two month period if possible, which means that they would see less exposure to things like depreciation. Remember, I said 45 days, they're exposed to home price depreciation. Over the past 190 quarters, only 22 of them were negative in terms of home price values. That's two and a half percent for a quarter. If Open Door is only under contract for half that time, you're really only suffering decreases in your inventory of 1.25%. With the in increase in the fees that they could charge, I mean, they, they would be even doing even better, I think. 
to Tyler's point, it's possible that they could raise prices. And in theory, the value proposition is potentially stronger in that sort of environment. But there is competition. They're not alone in the market. They dominate the market. They've got like 80% share. But there are a dozen well-funded competitors coming in that are attempting to undercut on price because that's their value proposition. And now they think they can compete with Open Door. I do wonder if that pricing power is stable enough for them to raise their fees. It's also putting the inventory risk on Open Door. So if we're in a declining price environment, which I'm not forecasting, but if we are entering that sort of environment, the inventory risk moves from the seller to open door. You might start to see more inventory impairments, which is a real expense for this business. I can't think of a single industry that has more barriers to entry than open door. The idea that someone can come in and threaten open door at 80% margin when Zillow couldn't, the barriers to entry are enormous because you have the technology on one side and then you have the operations on the other side. Technology that's the secret sauce of iBuying. That's the automated valuation model, the AVM. And the thing about artificial intelligence is that it compounds with time and it's informed by data. In every home sale, every home refurbishing, every time that Open Door goes into a house, it films the house. It takes pictures of everything. It takes pictures across the street. And all of that proprietary data is fed into its AVM and then it's used to make better offers in the future. And they're playing that patient long game. Not only will the pricing algorithm can continue to get better, but as they scale into new markets, the diversification actually improves their risk profile, number one, but two, it improves their scale and access to capital, contractors, their marketplace for having people refurbish homes and clean homes and resell them, more eyeballs and traffic to their website. All those things compound in a dramatic way. So I think having a 90% market share is the makings of a monopoly. It's just going to get stronger and stronger. They've been at this since 2014. The idea that someone can come in and build a neural network for 44 different markets that each behave differently using the thousands and thousands of homes that Open Door has already purchased, I just, I don't buy that. If Open Door's automated valuation model is really that special, wouldn't their margins be higher than 9.8%? What evidence do you have that Open Door's algorithm is a moat? Remember that these are not home flippers. Their fee is 5%. If their algorithm is working, they're as close to 5% as possible. Their, their margin is never going to be better than 15% at maturity. And that's with a boatload of ancillary services added on. The best way to look at the success of their technology and their operations is to look at unit economics. And if you compare unit economics of Open Door versus Zillow versus Offerpad versus, dear God, Redfin, it's not even close. Offerpad is the closest one in terms of gross margin. And and they actually in Q3 posted slightly higher gross margins than Open Door, but they made less per home than Open Door did, which is a reflection of higher cost inventory, but also just operational execution and scale. I think if there's any question about whether or not it's moat, look to the unit economics. And not only does Open Door have superior unit economics per home, but also they're growing so much faster than everyone else. 12X in one year versus offer pads 190% that they can do that and still be the most profitable is a pretty compelling argument that they have a moat in regards to technology and operations. This description of the company as a payments company versus this description of the company as a home flipper. If it were a home flipper, prices would matter. Is the argument to be made that the price of the house is irrelevant, they're only holding it for 45 days, we shouldn't care about that and we should just think about that 5% or do home prices have an impact? That's a great question. So I think the AVM goes much further than just what the price is worth and what can we sell it for. It also has to involve a level of forecast Testing. One of the most impossible things you can do in data science is say, okay, we've got a residential real estate market. Where will it be in 12 months? It's really hard to extrapolate data in a 12 month period, but 45 days is actually quite possible. And not only is it possible, but it's doable if you have enough data. That's where the AVM really comes in handy because it says, oh shoot, Vegas, it's looking like HPA is slowing down. So we can't just keep our foot on the pedal and keep buying homes at higher and higher valuations. We need to back off there. But in Phoenix, it's continuing to be healthy. So we can, we can put more leverage into that market. And that's what's great, right? It's a portfolio of markets that they're able to manage. And as a result, be much more profitable than their peers. And we saw this in Q3 with Zillow. In Q3, home price appreciation started to diminish and actually decrease in a lot of different markets. But Zillow kept their foot on the gas because they just instituted neural networks. Their AVM suffers from being four years late to the party relative to Open Door. And then there were also some management issues as well. Zillow continued to pay $65,000 more per home than the home was worth. And they were stuck holding the bag on all this inventory. Meanwhile, Open Door kept paying lower and lower and lower fees, which really mirrored the exact trend of real estate. And that's where the AVM really comes in handy. It's not just about spot price snapshot. It's also telling the future. 
I'm going to have a hard time wrapping my head around the notion that that 45 day home price value doesn't matter when so much of their balance sheet is inventory. It, it, it's hard for me to wrap my mind around that being irrelevant. Um, but, you know, I understand how the 5% is meant to be the driving factor. There are costs associated with that flip, right? I mean, again, not a home flipper, but at what point are they able to scale some of those operating costs or, or are they not really? Because the costs to renovate are kind of a variable. It's based on the number of houses that they sell. Is that 5% ambitious in an environment where house prices aren't necessarily rising 15%? Maybe this will help with like wrapping your head around the HPA doesn't matter. I, I think it, I think it does matter, but just to give you an idea, idea, like let's say that we had the worst year in US residential real estate and home prices are down 10%, but open door is exposed to that home for only 45 days. You got to divide 45 by 365 and then you multiply that by the 10%. And that's their exposure to the depreciation. And again, in a market like that, they would for sure ratchet up fees. It would completely offset any home price depreciation. So they're benefiting in margin right now, but actually it's worse for growth to have a seller's market. Does that make sense? It does, but that math implies that they only sell one house a year instead of for, no, you know, no, no, no. Like, specific asset. Every asset will have that because the turnover will be increased. They're making all their money in the fee, which will be higher as a result of it being a down market. If they can raise fees, sure. Yeah. Historically, the fees have come in, right? Is there a precedent for them to re-ratchet them up? It used to be very flexible. Some people, if they looked at the home and the pricing algorithm said, we can sell this quickly and we don't have to do any repairs, the fee would be lower. But they price risk. That's their core competency is pricing risk. And so if they felt like a home was going to be harder to sell, or as a market that they didn't understand as much, they would raise the fee. Only in this past year has the fee been 5%. I think if there was a large competitor that offered essentially the same service, a la Zillow, there could be competitive pressure on increasing price, even in a home depreciating environment. But with them out of the race, they can do whatever they want. Do you consider legacy realtors to be competitive? The real competitor is the traditional real estate transaction. And I don't mean that every realtor is a competitor to open door. I mean, that's, sure. I, I, think, I think that argument is is crazy but but I do think that it heralds a change in, in what the realtor's role is going to be in the home buying and selling transaction. I think they're moving more towards advisor. They're moving up market to more expensive homes where it's more of an art rather than a transaction and people are less price sensitive. They don't need liquidity premiums as much as someone who's middle-class American family. But I do think that Open Door, when they think about what problem they're solving, they're solving against the traditional real estate transaction, which is Byzantine. It's it's old. It's it's not been disrupted, and it needs to be. And I think I think whether you're pro or con Open Door, that's that's just a fact. It's just a poor poor experience, and and they're trying to do something bold and and reinvent it. I have absolutely no argument that the legacy real estate model is broken. If you've made it this far, make sure that you like and subscribe to the channel so that you can get the second part of the discussion where Tyler Oakland gives his predictions on Open Door.